Greg Peters said to me, imagine. Jim actually has a plan. All we have is the idea for the round. <laughs> you know, our next speaker is a very accomplished woman. But before we introduce her, let me just say, this is not just about criminal defense attorneys. This is not just about attorneys of, of South Asian heritage. This is about all of us. Everybody who believes that people have a right to be free. That the Constitution actually means something to us. Now our next speaker, Nancy Clarence, is a nationally known criminal defense attorney, a former federal public defender, founder of her own law firm, named one of the top 10 litigators in Northern California by San Francisco Magazine, named one of the top 75 women litigators in the entire state for the last three years by the Daily Journal, and for those of us, and I see the Bar Association is very well represented here, we have the Executive Director, uh, Dan Burkhart, we have the new incoming president, um, Jim Donato and Russ Roga and create a bunch of board members. But right now, our president, Nancy Clarence. Thank you so much. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, please greet the lawyers and judges of Pakistan step out of their offices and out of their courtrooms <laughs> and into the teeth of a dictatorship. They did it and they took to the streets and started a simple act of faith in their system. They marched. They marched even when the tear gas started. They marched when the nightsticks came out. They marched into the riot gear. And they did it to defend the rule of law and the constitution of their country. We should be proud to stand here today with them. Association of San Francisco, and it is an honor to stand with my sister bar associations from the Bay Area and the Public Defender of San Francisco, and all of you, along with other bar associations in Pakistan who've actually been the center of this huge act of resistance to government tyranny and overreaching. Think about the Pakistan Bar Association in Islamabad, which held a meeting to talk about how its hundreds of its members have been taken out and clubbed. And in that discussion, in that meeting, got a, a phone connection with the Chief Justice of Pakistan, who was under house arrest, so that he could exhort them to keep going, only as they saw thousands more of them arrested and hauled off to jail in Islamabad. Think about the president of the Bar Association in the province of Multan, who was leading a chant outside the courthouse and was hauled off as he tried to defend against the arrest of his very members. Think about the president of the Bar Association of Karachi who convened a meeting only to see his members dragged off and taken to jail on Tuesday. These are the people that we are here to stand with and these are the people that are exemplifying for us what we as lawyers need to do. It's not very often that you open the front page of the New York Times and see lawyers on the front lines. But that's what we need to do, because as the other speakers and Jeff in particular articulated, we have our own fight on our hands. And our own fight might not take the form of lawyers being dragged out of courtrooms and gassed and drug, dragged off to court. Our struggle is one against attacks on the fairness and impartiality of our courts. Our struggle, which is equally dramatic and important is to stand up against the politicization of our courts by special interests who would turn our courts into puppets for their narrow self-interest. And we not only have an idea, we have a program. The Bar Association of San Francisco invites all of you to participate in our task force on the impartiality and fairness of the courts. In fact, we do have a rapid response team right now that is sending letters to editors all around the state that has sent a letter to Senator Boxer and Senator Feinstein, and yes, is sending a letter today to President Bouchard to tell him that the Bar Association of San Francisco and our sister bar, bars here in the Bay Area, and all of you will not stand by idly and watch as the rule of law is trampled. Thank you all for being here.
that uh, president, ladies and gentlemen, Nancy Clare. Give her another round of applause. Thank you. She was just a medal in starting this task force on the independent position this year. And that really is one of the foundations of what we're talking about here. It was the independence of the judiciary that threatened Pervez Musharraf, whose re-election in October was in question because there was a question about whether he could also run for re-election and be head of the military. And even though he said he's going to resign as head of the military, he has not done it. And we have our same problems with the independence of the judiciary here. Because when there's a litmus test on abortion, or the Patriot Act, we lose that separation of powers. When a Supreme Court tells the formerly sovereign state of Florida during the 2000 election, stop counting ballots, we lose the independence of the judiciary. You know, our next speaker has a first-hand knowledge about what we're talking about in terms of the situation in Pakistan. It's Javed Elahi. He's president of the uh, Bay Area Muslim Lawyers Association. He's the founder of his own law firm, cum laude graduate of the University of Santa Clara, and a former pro tem judge. And if we could have Mr. Elahi here. Thank you very much. I do want to clarify, I'm not the president of the Bay Area Muslim Lawyers, but I am speaking here on their behalf. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to be here. I want to thank the Bar Association of San Francisco, the CTLA, and the other bar associations for making this possible. Uh, I've lived in the United States for uh, almost 40 years, and I was here, I came here when I was 18, I guess my, my age goes away. But, you know, when you're born in a country, in a, in a sense, a piece of you is still out there. I'm also licensed to practice in Pakistan. And this, this uh, event was really important to me. Uh, when, when the news went out, you were hosting it, I myself volunteered to speak here because it was important to me because a, a very dear friend of mine, Munir Malik, with whom I grew up, who went to uh, high school, uh, who I went to high school with, and who uh, went to San Jose State, uh, did a degree in accounting, magna cum laude, so he did better than I did. But, and then he went to Santa Clara University and also graduated magna cum laude. He became a CPA here and he also became an attorney who was licensed to practice here. But he chose to return to Pakistan. And he chose to return because he wanted to serve his country. And he wanted to make those sacrifices that go. You know, when you go from, a, uh, from the United States, usually it's people who want to come here. There's very few people who want to return. I mean, maybe there's more people that want to return at this time. But in 1974, nobody wanted to go back to their own country because the things just you know, were not uh, that satisfactory. But he chose to return. And he made a struggle out of uh, returning there and, and making a fight out for, for, for the rule of law. He earned the respect from his fellow bar members to an extent that you know, he became the president of the Supreme Court Bar Association, which is the highest honor uh, an attorney can achieve, uh, sort of being a chief justice of the Supreme Court. So he had earned that uh, honor. And what happened was on uh, Musharraf became concerned that the edicts he was passing would not become law. The Chief Justice had started exerting some pressure on some of the uh, laws that they had passed, and I, won't, I don't want to get into the details on that. So he suspended the Chief Justice. First he called him into his house, into the, the presidential palace, it's a luxurious presidential palace by the way, and said, resign. And you know, I'll give you whatever you want, I'll give you whatever position you want, I'll give you whatever you know, monetary sanctions you want, just get, get off the bench. Chief Justice refused, he said, I'm not going to